On the medial aspect, it's a little less complicated. We've got a lot of frontal lobe. It goes all the way back to the central sulcus. We have this cingulate sulcus that we said was a really good landmark to find because where it kicks up into the marginal sulcus, pars marginalis, gives you a definition of where the central sulcus is going to be. If that cingulate sulcus continues underneath the parietal lobe, that's called the subparietal sulcus. And then we've already talked about the parietal occipital sulcus dividing the parietal and occipital lobes, and then the calcarine, or calcarine sulcus. That's a really important one for the visual cortex because there's half a visual cortex above and half below, and it's opposite. Common bile duct runs behind the first part of the duodenum. So the first part of the duodenum is intraperitoneal. It runs behind it, and then it comes through the pancreatic head and to the major duodenal papilla, and it has the main pancreatic duct also coming in with it. So we're going to look for this on CT. This is where our free edge of our lesso omentum is going to be. We're going to have a common hepatic artery here. We're going to have the portal vein, and then the next one along is going to be our common bile duct. And so if we follow that down here, it's going behind the first part of the duodenum. Here's the duct coming down into the head of the pancreas here. And then it's going to dump itself into that second part of the duodenum with the major duodenal papilla. Okay, you can almost see the main pancreatic duct, but it's very, very small, which is normally the case. On the coronal images, gallbladder, cystic duct is going to join into the common hepatic duct to form this common bile duct, running behind the first part of the duodenum and then down in the pancreatic head into the duodenum around about there. Let's have a look at a little bit of pathology. So here's a common bile duct, much bigger than the one we were just looking at. And as we get to the bottom, we see a stone sitting in it. So that's cholidocolithiasis. We don't always see this on CT because stones are not always radiodense on CT. We might see it better on ultrasound. But a nice example of a common bile duct there with a stone. So here just illustrating some of those differences. There's the transverse frame in, in the transverse process of the cervical vertebrae, usually from C6 up. C7 shouldn't have it, but occasionally might. Here are the little costal facets on the transverse processes to allow the costotransverse joint, and then this will be the costovertebral joint of the ribs, the lumbar transverse processes being long and slender. And here, look at these facet joints. See how they change orientation? So the cervical spine, they're quite horizontal, then they change and angle in, and then they angle away in the uh, lumbar spine. Obviously the optic nerve, really, really big, obvious cranial nerve too, coming through the optic canals, coming from the back of the globe, meeting at the optic chiasm with the pituitary infundibulum sitting directly behind it, and then giving off the optic radiations going each way from there. And you'll remember that if you get a big pituitary tumour, patients get compression of their optic chiasm, often present with a bitemporal hemianopia. And here's a good example of why that happens. Here's our optic chiasm getting pushed up and as we run forward, just look how stretched out this nerve is as it's heading to try and get into the optic canal. Mm -hmm.